Hi, my name is Justine Riley. I'm one of the OBGYN generalists here at UT Health Austin, and I'm here today to talk about the answers to some of your most searched questions regarding the second trimester. So what happens to my body in the second trimester? During the second trimester, uh, the baby starts as the size of a lemon but starts to grow uh, substantially in length and in weight. And so at this point, your body also starts to change with the growing baby, right? The uterus and your abdomen are gonna start to get a little bit bigger. By 20 weeks, the baby's up to your belly button. So this is really, you know, weeks 14 to 27 or the second trimester when people really start to show. You know, with that comes a lot of hormonal changes of pregnancy and and um, you know, a lot of those symptoms are normal. Should I be eating more during the second trimester? So I think it's kind of a common misconception that people think that they should be quote unquote eating for two. I actually tell my patients that you probably should just be eating twice as healthy. Typically the recommendation is to increase your caloric intake by about 350 calories per day. Um, you know, this is about like, this is like a glass of milk and a half a sandwich or like a bowl of oatmeal and a banana, so it's not significantly much. Um, obviously, that's, that's twice that for twins and, and so on, and multiple pregnancies. So what symptoms are abnormal and when should you call your doctor? Although we know that the risk of miscarriage decreases pretty significantly after the first trimester, there still is potential to have complications like bleeding, um, cramping, and especially if those things become heavy or severe. Uh, or if you have leakage of fluid that's either kind of large in volume or really persistent, these are all things that we should know about because those can be signs of complications like preterm labor and other you know, placental abnormalities. So what symptoms are normal? Usually in the second trimester, um, some of the morning sickness has worn off. We actually tend to refer to this as like the honeymoon period of your pregnancy because you don't feel so profoundly fatigued and you're not throwing up anymore. And so there are symptoms that are normal in the second trimester and they tend to be related to the hormonal changes like we were talking about. So um, things like acid reflux, constipation, there's skin changes, you know, darkening of the face and sometimes the line in your lower abdomen. So probably increased vaginal discharge, increased sex drive, um, and there are a few other things that can happen, but they're mostly pretty mild. However, they can be bothersome, so of course let us know. Um, there's lots of medications that are safe to, to treat all of these things. Are there specific screening tests or genetic testing that you should have in your second trimester? Commonly in the second trimester, we're going to order what's called the anatomy scan. Um, this is an ultrasound that looks in depth at the parts of the baby, just making sure that there are no anomalies. Um, this in combination with some of the blood work that we do in the first trimester usually is gonna tell us a lot about whether the baby has Down syndrome or other anomalies. And then around 24 to 28 weeks, we actually screen people with blood work for anemia, which is super common in pregnancy, as well as for gestational diabetes or diabetes of pregnancy. Um, and then you potentially could have follow-up testing depending on the results of all the screening that we, that we do, including the scan and the blood work. What complications can arise during this trimester? Like I said, the second trimester tends to be um, pretty pretty benign um, and a little bit of a honeymoon period, but you know, you still are at risk for some complications. Preeclampsia, however rare it is, sometimes does present in the second trimester, so we'll always be monitoring your blood pressure and let us know if you have problems like persistent headache despite taking Tylenol, visual changes, or you know, belly pain up in your right upper side because that's where your liver is. Additionally, you know, pregnant women are somewhat immunosuppressed, so infections are more common. So things like UTI symptoms are, are things you would definitely want to let us know about. Uh, similarly, COVID, uh, you know, in this day and age is a significant concern, so you want to make sure that you um, have been vaccinated and boosted. When will I feel my baby move and kick? Usually around 18 to 20 weeks is when you're gonna start noticing what women describe as like a fluttering. You know, the babies move actually starting at 10 weeks, but they're just too small for you to feel it. Typically women who've been pregnant before will feel it kind of sooner, but you know, I don't really expect anyone to feel it until 20 weeks or so. 
and then it's not really reliable as a marker of fetal well-being until later in the pregnancy. As far as you know, your partner or anybody else being able to feel, I would say, you know, usually around more like 24 weeks and later. Um, but you know, it's always an exciting experience for sure. When should I start counting fetal kicks? Around 26 to 28 weeks, the movements of the baby become kind of a reliable marker of well-being. Uh, depending on how high risk your pregnancy is, you may get told to do it more or less often. It's also really helpful for women to know that you know this is something that you can do, uh, counting fetal movements whenever you know you're wondering whether the baby's moving normally. Typically, you want to get 10 movements in two hours, um, but just talk to your doctor and we'll be able to let you know how often you should be doing this, if at all. When may I learn the sex of my baby? So the genetic sex of the baby oftentimes is able to be identified on the blood test in the first trimester that's done to assess for chromosomal abnormalities, but oftentimes we can add in, you know, we want to know the sex of the baby as well. If you haven't gotten that information in the first trimester, usually around 18 to 22 weeks when we do that anatomy ultrasound, we're able to identify whether uh, the baby is genetically male or female based off of ultrasound characteristics. So when should I start sleeping on my side? So there's actually you know, some evidence that in the third trimester, going to sleep on your back is associated with some increased risk of stillbirth. But we actually have really good newer data that tells us before 28 weeks, which is essentially the first and second trimester, that there's no risk of increased complications in pregnancy if you're sleeping on your back. So I typically tell my patients that in the third trimester, um, that's the time at which if they're usually a back sleeper, that I would try to start going to sleep on, on your side. And it doesn't really matter which side. Um, classically, we told people the left just because of blood supply. This is all about blood supply. But ultimately, um, the third trimester, sleeping on your side is, is totally fine. Prior to that, you know, don't worry. I also wouldn't worry if you wake up on your back anyway. Just, again, if you're in the third trimester, flip to one of your sides. So I hope I've answered your questions about the second trimester. Keep in mind that every patient is different and you wanna to talk to your own OBGYN about your specific case, uh, especially if you have any high risk conditions. Thanks again for joining us today and stay tuned for the third trimester video.